المين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الليل فتهجد به نافلة لك عسى أن يبعثك ربك مقاما محمودا صدق الله العظيم إن الله ملاكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معد نجود والكرم وآله وبارك وسلم إكما تبعون نهاية أدب واحترام كساء دروشي فنزلان بشيدي زولتي صلى الله على النبي الأمي وآله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله إن شاء الله تدعي on the 46th covenant as mentioned by Imam Abdul Wahab al-Sha'arani rahmatullah alayhi in his renowned book Lawatuh al-Anwar al-Qudsiyah we shall mention a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the sunnah of waking up for tahajjud a sunnah that has been neglected a sunnah that has died out a sunnah that if someone revives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him the reward of a hundred martyrs inshaAllah. مَنْ أَحْيَا سُنَّةِ عِنْدَ فَسَادِ أُمَّتِي فَلُهُ أَجْرُ مِئَةِ شَهِيدِ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم کہ جو کوئی شخص حضور اکم صلى الله عليه وسلم فرماتے ہیں میری ایک سنت کو زندہ کرے گا میری امت میں فساد کے وقت at the time of dissension and trials and tribulations within this ummah anyone who revives one sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم he will be rewarded with the reward of a hundred martyrs. What is the reward of one martyr? Ek shahid ka kya sawab hai? Ke uske badan se, khun ke pehle qatre ki girne hi se, wo apna maqam jannat mein dekh leta hai. That even, even before, a single drop of blood drops on the floor, he sees his abode in jannah. This is the ajr of one shahid. Then what do, we, what do you think about the ajr of a hundred shaheed which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reward of which Allah will give to that person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emulates the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu himself and propagates it to other people. Now some people when this is usually what we try and think about the zuhad and ubad the great worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ascetics those who, are abs- those who adhere to abstinence from this dunya those who used to pray for 40 years, like Hazrat Ghazibat radiallahu ta'ala anhu, for 40 years, he prayed the Fajr prayer with the wuzu that he performed for the Isha prayer. The same narration for Imam Azam Muhanifa rahmatullah alayhi, that 40 years se musalsal, Isha ki wuzu se aapne Fajr ki namaz adha farmai. Puri puri raat, ibadah mein guzarte the. And some people think that is zamane mein, کچھ لوگ سوچتے ہیں کہ اس زمانے میں ایسے واقعات کہنے کی کیا ضرورت ہے Now the question is not directed to the one who is relating this incident to directed to the author Imam Abdul Wahab Sha'ar Rahmatullah Why? What, what was the purpose behind why Imam Abdul Wahab Sha'ar Rahmatullah Alayhi knowing about the dissension in, the, in this ummah knowing about the level of retardation which was in this ummah what was the need of talking about the awliya and the salih and the ibadah the reason being is that those people who neglect the fara'il, the wajibat, the sunan, the obligatory actions, the wajibat, the, the, those which are binding upon each person, when they read about these awliya kiram, it incites them to pray the namaz properly on time, to keep their fasts on time, to give zakat on time, to perform the hajj on time. So that by reading these waqiat and these stories, intimates of these awliya, we get this motivation, this inspiration, to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this ahad, Imam Abdul Wahab Shani rahmatullahi talks about, he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Aqad alayna al-ahad al-aam min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, an nasta'idda li qiyam al-layl bil-zuhdi fi al-dunya wa shahawatiha. We have been given this covenant, which reaches the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, that we prepare ourselves for qiyam al-layl. Our Qiyamul Layl is in the Shisha bath. Our Qiyamul Layl is in front of the PS3, the PlayStation. 
the Xbox, the iPads and iPods and whatever has come out. This is our Qiyam throughout the night. And the Qiyam of the Ubad and the Zuhad was crying before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was like the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. His seerah as we shall hear from the hadith of Hazza Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated by Imam Muslim, Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi and Imam Muslim ibn uh, Imam Ahmed ibn Hamad also narrates this in his Musnad. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to spend the entire night in worship. The entire night in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huzur Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jinn ke tawassud se aap se agle aur aap se piche wano ke gunah maaf kar diye jate hain. آپ کے توسط سے اللہ تعالیٰ کتنے ہزاروں کی شفاعت فرمائے گا کتنے لوگوں کو اللہ تعالیٰ بے حساب و کتاب جنہ میں داخل فرمائے گا آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پوری پوری رات جاگتے ہوئے اپنی امت کی یاد میں اللہ تعالیٰ کی عبادت میں عبادت کیا کرتے تھے and look at ourselves we cannot even pray our faraid on time we cannot even pray perform the wajibat on time and this is why امام ابو حشاء رحمت اللہ علیہ وسلم that we prepare ourselves for Qiyamul Layl, for standing up in vigil prayer during the night, this zuhdi fi dunya, by being abstinent, feeling this kind of rejection, rejection to this dunya, having abstinence from this dunya, taking from the dunya only that which suffices, not holding and amassing wealth upon wealth upon wealth. Some people are not there, their greed is not satisfied. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said about this dunya. That if there was for Bani Adam a wadi min zahab, a, a valley full of gold, then when he achieves that, he would say, I want this another valley of gold. And then when he achieves the second valley of gold, kahega mujhe tisri, tisra pahar chahiye sone ka. I want the third valley of gold. Until the Prophet Sallallahu said, nothing will satisfy his greed, nothing will satisfy him except for the soil under which he shall be buried. So just take from this dunya something which suffices, only that which suffices, and leave the rest for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, وَمِنْ هُنَا صَحَّةِ الْمُوَاظَبُتُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ عَلَى قِيَمِ اللَّيْلِ وَمُهَاجَرَةُ غَيْرِهِمْ It is because of this reason, the reason of only taking from the dunya, sirf dunya se itna hi lena, jitna kifayet kare, is si wajah se salihin log raat ko qiyam karte the. اور باقی لوگ نے قیام چھوڑ دیا کیوں دنیا کے اندر مشاقہ دنیا کے اندر محنت دنیا کمانے میں اپنی لگ گئے ہیں کہ ہم اپنے اپنے آزائے جسمانی کو تھکا دیا ہے جس کے وجہ سے ہم رات کو اٹھ نہیں سکتے ہیں and then he says about the women and especially the عابدہ زاہدہ قانتہ his own noble wife فاطمہ ام عبد الرحمن he says وَمَا رَأَتْ عَيْنِ مِن نِسَاءِ عَصْرِ my eye has never seen anyone from the women of this era أكثر مواظبة على قيام الليل من زوجة أم عبد الرحمن. How pious wives were they given? Pious children were they given? I have never seen anyone from the time from from this era. He says of his era, someone who was perpetual in doing performing the tahajjud prayers on top of the faraid than my noble wife Um عبد الرحمن, whose name was Fatima. And he says about her. فَرُبَّمَا صَلَّتْ خَلْفِي وَهِيَ حُبْلَ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْوِلَادَةِ بِنَسْبِ الْقُرْآنِ She would recite behind me, perform tahajjud namaz behind me, while she had a child in her womb, she was pregnant, she would recite tahajjud prayers behind me, and I would recite half of the Qur'an inside it. And she would keep on standing behind me. وَهَذَا عَزِيزٌ جِدًّا وَكُوْعُهُ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ عَلَى وَجْلِ إِخْلَاسِ فَضْلٌ عَنِ النِّسَاءِ And for this to happen amongst men, in the relation to ikhlas and out of sincerity is very rare, let alone from women. And he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in nataifun minan, from those things which Allah has blessed him. He said, from those blessings which Allah has blessed me with is a noble wife, someone who used to pray behind me, tahajjud, whilst I would recite the end, half, of, half of the Qur'an inside the tahajjud prayers. And then he talks about another man here who prayed behind Imam Sha'ani rahmatullah. And how much, did he, how much Qur'an did he used to recite? Kina Qur'an parte tebo? Farmate hain. وَقَدْ صَلَّى خَلْفِي مَرَّةً سَلَامَةُ السَّنَدِ بَسْتِ میرے پیچھے ایک دن کسی شخص نے جو میری ہی سائز کا تھا میری ہی جسم اور جسامت کا تھا he was حتا کرتا he was healthy someone prayed behind me فَقَرَتُ بِهِ مِنْ أَوَّلِ سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ إِلَى سُورَةِ الْمُزَّمِّنِ فِي الرَّقَعَةِ الْأُولَى میں نے پہلی رکعت میں سورہ بقرہ سے لے کر سورہ مزم شریف کی پوری تیلاوت فرمائی 
from Surah Al-Baqarah to Surah Al-Muzammil fi rakat al-Ula in the first rakat. فَخَرَّ نَائِمًا وَلَمْ يَشْعُرْ بِنَفْسِهِ And that man then, because of the intensity of the prolonged recitation, he fell. He was in the state of, he fell asleep and he fell down. وَلَمْ يَشْعُرْ بِنَفْسِهِ He wasn't even aware of it. And he says, هَذَا مَعَ صِحَةِ جِسْمِهِ وَقِلَّةِ تَعْبِيثِ النَّهَارِ This man, he fell unconscious due to this prolonged recitation despite the fact that he wasn't tiring himself due to the dunya in the morning and he was, he was a person who had good health. Then he says, فَرَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ أُمِّ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَانِ May Allah be pleased with my wife, Ummi Abdi Rahman, who passed away before him. Fatima, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ مَا أَعَلَىٰ هِمَّتُهَا How great was her aspiration to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. حَيْثُ عَلَتْ عَلَىٰ هِمَّةِ الرِّجَالِ Her aspiration of ibad was greater than the hymn of men. وَإِنَّمَا جَعَلْنَا الزُّهُدَ فِي الدُّنْيَا مُعِيدًا عَلَىٰ قِيَامِ اللَّيْلِ لِمَا غُرِضَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ And we have made zuhud abstinence from the dunya. Only taking from the dunya was suffice for me. People have greed. You look at people. He is earning 400 pounds a week. Someone else is earning 150 pounds a week. If, if only I could have earned 400 pounds. This is greed. Don't look at people who are earning more than you. Look at people who have been deprived from even the basic needs of living a good life. Living a normal average life of food and water. In Ethiopia and Somalia people are dying out of hunger. There's famine there. There's a drought there. Look at those people who are less fortunate. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He has given you the ni'am of, of you to be able to see, for you to be able to walk, for you to be able to talk, for you to be able to uh, move your hand and put a morsel of food in your, in your mouth. Some people don't have the ability to do that. And every single day we should do the shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just on these blessings that Allah has given us for granted, the a'adha, the body part, even if we were to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah of one eye, we should still not be able to thank Him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to do qiyamul layl. Despite the fact that he was rahmatul alameen, he was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that anyone who attaches himself with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is guaranteed an abode in Jannah. And, Hazrat, and the Hazrat Aisha Siddiqah radiallahu ta'ala anha says, عن أم المؤمنين عائشة الصديقة رضي الله تعالى عنها أن النبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يقوم من الليل حتى تتفطر قدماه كهزور كم صلى الله عليه وسلم بوري بوري رات قيام الليل فرماته يا حتى كي آب كي باون وارشري من شغاف هو جاته وريك رواية ناتا ها وفي رواية سيدنا مغيرة بن شعبة حتى تورمت قدماه يا حتى كي آب كي قدم باشري من ورم پیدا هو جاته the Prophet ﷺ would stand excessively in the night until there were cracks in his blessed feet. In another notion it says, until his blessed feet would swell. Hazrat Aisha Siddiqah radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says, لِمَا تَسْنَعُ هَذَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَرْ Why are you doing this? Why are you exerting so much effort? Why are you enduring such hardships, ya Rasulullah صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ آپ انہی تکلیف کیوں برداشت کر رہے ہیں حالانکہ اللہ تعالیٰ نے آپ کی وجہ سے آپ کے اگلوں کو اور آپ کی پیجنوں کو معاف فرما دیا ہے Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven those who came before you and those who shall come after you through your tawassul Why, why are you doing this? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied أَفَلَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Do I not like to be a grateful servant? A servant who thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala کیا میں شکر گزار بندہ نہ بنو This is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with regards to ourselves, Imam Bursay Rahmatullah says in his Kafir Buddha Shreef, ظَلَمْتُ سُنَّةَ مَنَحْيَا الظَّلَامَ إِلَىٰ أَنِشْتَكَتْ قَدَمَاهُ الدُّرَّ مِنْ وَرَمِي میں نے ان مقدس ہستی کی سنت مبارک کو ترک کر فرما دیا کہ جو پوری پوری رات زندہ فرماتے تھے قیام اللیل کے ذریعے یہاں تک کہ آپ کے پاؤں مبارشی میں ورم آ جاتے تھے I have neglected the sunnah of the greatest man, the greatest noble personat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this ummah who used to stand up in Qiyamul Layl until his blessed feet used to swell out of the ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why you will see the Salafu Salihin, those who emulate the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who give preference to the akhirah over the dunya. Like Imam Junal al-Baghdadi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who used to recite every single night, he used to close the doors of his house when people used to leave him, and in isolation, in dis- in, in, out of, uh, discreetly, in secrecy, not showing up to people, close the doors, and he would recite 400 rakats every single day. 
Nafal prayer. 400 rakats. Imam Zayn al-Abidin radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Imam Zayn al-Abidin, Ali ibn al-Husayn ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu jama'in. The ornament of the worshippers. Every single day without fail, he used to recite a thousand rakats nafal prayer. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. As I told you before, Chahali Saal se Isha ke wuzu se Fajr ki namaz Allah farmai. The same narration with Ghosi Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And it has been narrated by his khadim and his servant who used to say, one day, and in fact every single day this was the custom of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, that he used to go to the masjid after people would leave his house. He would discreetly go to the mosque. And I would accompany him. And he said, when we used to be in the mosque of Al of Kufa, or Baghdad Sharif, wherever he was, we used to engage in Qiyamul Layl. And Imam Muhanifa Rahmatullah used to spend the entire night standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, crying, lamenting himself, weeping before him. And then the Khadim says, the servant says, to, he, this was the extent of his worship that sometimes I would feel I couldn't control myself I couldn't bear to wake myself up so I would go go to my house and what I would do was just to examine whether Imam Hanifa is staying in the mosque or not I would put some stones and pebbles inside the sandals of Imam Hanifa Rahmatullah the Khadim says that when the Qiyam al-Layl and my upar it becomes difficult to jaga تو میں مسجد سے نکل کر میں امام محنی پر رحمت اللہ علیہ کے مقدس نالے میں پتھر رکھ دیتا تاکہ میں دیکھوں کہ کیا امام محنی پر رحمت اللہ علیہ میرے بعد تشریف میرے بعد مسجد سے نکل جائیں گے یا قیام اللہ میں پوری رات میں عبادت میں اللہ تعالیٰ کی یہاں گزاریں گے he says the khadim says I go back to return home and when it is the azan of the fajr prayer I return back to the masjid and I find the sandals that the pebbles and the stones are in inside the blessed sandals of Muhani Farahmat as I left them and when I opened those doors to the masjid I find Imam Muhani Farahmat exactly in that same spot weeping before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Khadim says that when I came to the Fajr I saw that the door of the door was the same as I had kept it and then when I opened the door then Imam Muhani Farahmat Allah he saw that in that place Allah Ta'ala he said he was in the same place and Allah Ta'ala he said he was in the same place these were the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَلِ الْمَضَاجِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفٌ وَطَمَعًا These are the people whose sides are detached from their beds during the night and they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of fear and out of hope of His mercy. كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُونَ They were people who used to sleep little during the night and they used to spend those nights in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least an ibadah which he accepts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the least make us pray the faraid with its right may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a little tawfiq to pray at least two rakats whatever we can at qiyamul layl to revive the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to revive the sunnah of our salafu salihin to revive the sunnah of those who aspire to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dhuru shifra Allah salli ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadi ma'adam judu wal karami wa alihi wa barik wa sallam just one hadith or a couple of hadiths inshallah in relation to the excellence of Qiyamul Layl the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is يَعْقِدُ الشَّيْطَانُ عَلَىٰ قَافِيَةِ رَأْسِ أَحَدِكُمْ إِذَا هُوَ نَامَ ثَلَاثَ عُقَدْ جب آدمی سو جاتا ہے when a person sleeps the shaitan ties three knots on the nape of his when he reclines to sleep this is on every single person he ties three knots غَرْبَمْ کے اوپر تین نوٹ لگاتا ہے یضرب على كل عقدة عليك ليلا طويل فرقد as he is tying each knot he says oh man you have a very long night ahead of you remain asleep you've got a very long night ahead of you فرقد so sleep فإن استيقظ پھر جب آدمی اشتا ہے when a man awakes from sleep فَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى and he mentions Allah subhanahu makes the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in حَلَّةُ عُقْدَةٌ one tie is unknotted one knot is untied sorry one knot is untied فَإِن تَوَضَّعَ in حَلَّةُ عُقْدَةٌ when he makes wudu another knot is untied فَإِن صَلَّى when he prays namaz in حَلَّةُ عُقْدَةُ كُلُّهَا when he performs namaz then all the knots are untied فَأَصْبَحَ النَّشِيطٌ طَيِّبَ النَّفْسِ and he wakes up in the morning fresh 
His heart is joyous. His heart is, is happy with, content with the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِلَّا أَصْبَحَ خَبِيثَ النَّفْسِ كَسْلَانِ However, if he sleeps all throughout during the night, doesn't do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu in any portion of the night, he wakes up during the night anxious. He wakes up in the morning anxious. His heart feels restricted. He doesn't feel this kind of uh, refreshment. He is always lazy, kaslan. And this is why it has also been narrated in one hadith in Tabrani, Man nama ila sabahi fadalika rajulun bala shaytan fi uzunihi. If a person remains asleep all throughout during the night, he is a man that shaytan urinates in his ear. Yani jo koi shaks, puri puri dat, sota rehta hai, khuda ke zikr nahi karta hai. تو حضور کم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پر اشارت فرما دی یہ وہ شخص ہے جس کے کان کے اندر شیطان پر اشارت کرتا ہے امام عبدالعہ حمشاہ نے فرماتے ہیں قلتو وقد وقع لباب اصحابنا ذالکا کچھ ہمارے دوستوں کے ساتھ ایسا ہوا فقام والبول سائق من اوزنیہ علی رقبتہ تو وہ صبح اٹھے اور ان کی کانوں سے پیشا کی قطر تپک رہے تھے he woke up during the morning and there were drops of, sh- drops of urine coming out from his ears فَغَسَلَهُ بِحَضْرَتِ And he washed it before me. And I could see that this was taken in literal form, not, not taken in a different interpretation. The hadith is, if a person sleeps all throughout during the night, the shaitan unis in this. And then this is why the nasiha that people uh, give, the admonishment, it doesn't reach our hearts because our ears are deafened with the urine of shaitan. And this is why we should try and aspire to at least at least what we can do, one simple thing that we can do for Qiyamul Layl, for aspiring to do Tahajjud prayer, is to sleep in a state of ablution, as we mentioned before. And secondly, it has been written one, had one uh, narration, that if anyone performs two rakat nafal after the Isha prayer, after the Witr. And in the first rakat, he recites Surah Zilzal, Iza Ardu Zilzalaha. And in the second rakat, he recites Surah Al-Kafirun, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah reward him the reward of Tahajjud. This is just to give you a bit of inspiration and motivation, otherwise the reward of tahajjud is immense. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and everyone the tawfiq to do Qiyamul Layl, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our worship inshaAllah. He recites Surah Al-Fatiha once, and Surah Al-Ikhaz thrice for the Isal of a great noble personality who passed away on the second of Dhul-Qa'dah, which was today, in 1948. Huzur Sadhu Shah Rahmatullah Alayhi, a great Khalifa of Allah Rahmatullah Alayhi, the great student of Allah Rahmatullah Alayhi, someone who had sacrificed his wealth, his life, his knowledge for the sake of the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah, someone who had left great assets and treasures for the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah. May Allah sanctify his secret, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witness blessings upon him, Al Fatiha, the Ruhi Sharifa. اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معد الجود والكرم وآله وبارك وسلم اللهم فعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا من فضلك علما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها مولا فاغفر لها اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع من قلب لا يخشع من نفس لا تشبع من دعوة لا استجاب لها يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم دي المارك المستقيم حقي جاك نعبد وجاك نعيسك نعبد وجاك نستعين هما جزك قبول فرما يا الله اسم جو بيان كيا جزك قبول فرما سب کا صحاب حضور اکم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی بارگاہ میں پیشت قبول فرما آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی توسل جلیل سے تمام بی کرام علی مصاد الرسیم تمام صحابی کرام صحابیت ازواج مطاہرات امہت امیرین تمام بزرگان دین اولی کرام کی بارگاہ میں پیشت قبول فرما بالخصوص حضور قوس پاک رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ خواجہ غیب نواز رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ جمعین و تمام صحابی الحقا کی تمام شیخ غا مردین علی عمل قیام سب کی بارگاہ میں پیشت قبول فرما بالخصوص آج آج جس مقدس ہستی کا اس سے پاک منائے جا رہا ہے حضور صدر شہر رحمت اللہ علیہ آپ کی مقدس روح کو اس سب کا صحاب پیشت قبول فرما حضور صدر شہر رحمت اللہ علیہ اور آپ کے تمام مشایخ اعظام و اساتذہ و خلفاء و مریدین 
اور تمام شاگردین سب کی بارگاہوں پیش سے قبول فرما یار حضور صدر شاہ رحمۃ اللہ علیہ کے فیضان سے ہم سب کو مالا مال فرما آپ کی خدمات کو قبول فرما اور اس کے ذریعے آپ کے درجات کو بلند سے بلند تر فرما یار ہم سب کو حضور صدر شاہ رحمۃ اللہ علیہ کو اس و حسنہ پر عمل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرما ہم سب کو آپ کی طرح اخلاص کے ساتھ دین و سنت کی خدمات انجام دینے کی توفیق عطا فرما یار ہم سب کو علم عمل کی لاز اور دولت عطا فرما ہم سب کی خطا و گناہوں کو معاف فرما اللهم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد مع الجود والكرم واله وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزه